G'day. Today we're doing a bit of work on a F100 79 model. It's in for a service and investigation on why it might be holding gears second gear too long. First point of call would be the fluid level. Always good to check the basics first. These haven't got any electronics in them or anything like that. Check the oil level. Next point of call would be the vacuum line that goes from the inlet manifold down to the vacuum modulator on the back of the transmission. If you have a look here, we've actually got the brake booster vacuum. You've got some vacuum hose going there to the gas unit, the gas mixer, and also that one there that's going down the back of the firewall and that one's actually the one that's going to the transmission. That's the one we're really interested in. You can see that's very loose. Let's see if I can just pop that off. The rubber's actually hardened on the end so it's probably not pliable and not sealing properly. So that's probably his major problem that's causing that issue. It's loose on the other end as well. And that just pushes onto the steel pipe. It's a good idea to check that the steel pipe is bolted securely. Sometimes they'll uh, be loose and be rubbing on the body or somewhere and wear a little hole in there as well. So anyway, we'll replace those vacuum lines. Good idea to just check that the, um, the ports in that vacuum fitting aren't carboned up as well. So because these have a filler tube, we're going to just suck the oil out of it with our vacuum pump. Makes the job a bit less messy. It's actually a C6 in this one, 351. You'll notice there's quite a few oil leaks everywhere. The vacuum hose on the hose is actually a wrong type of hose. It's not a vacuum hose. You can see that's so soft and also there's a little kink in it there. So that would be restricting the, the vacuum to the modulator as well. They've also put celastic all over the pan gasket. But I'd say the leak is coming from somewhere else, somewhere up top. Bit of a leak on the extension housing seal there. Bush may be a little bit worn. Sometimes you've got, well, not sometimes, you've always got to check that the bushing in there's okay. If the bushing's too worn, you can keep replacing these seals and the movement's going to make it leak out of any new seal that you replace. Good idea to check the universal joints. Um, over here, they, they do leak where the selector seal is as well. Rear uni's a bit worn as well, and you can see that the diff hasn't been serviced for a while. The little filler plugs there, you can see, hasn't been off for quite a while. Now yeah, this has been celastic or even glued on. No, just go sideways like that. And it's important to just carefully cut that celastic if, if it's been celastic on like that. Now that was an experience, getting this pan off. Someone's actually glued it. Glued it enough that it would actually tear the gasket. And you can see it's still stuck on that pan rail. Now you can see when they were putting it in, they even got the celastic on the filter there. Now what's dangerous on the inside of that pan rail there would have been all bits of celastic falling into the transmission over a period of time and then those large chunks will actually go into the filter and block them. So no need to use that stuff unless you've got a damaged pan or pan rail. If you put a new gasket on generally you won't need to put that stuff on. I don't use the stuff. So we'll 
I'll start with the speedo there, 716. You can see the the O-rings completely flattened out, so it was leaking. That would just get the splashing oil there, but it's an annoying leak. So we'll replace that O-ring. Good idea to just check the, the teeth on the driven gear on the speedo. And these have, can't see it there, I don't have the light, but they have the splines on the actual output shaft. Speedo cable O-ring on the left, if it'll focus, and the new one on the right. Left one's flattened out a little bit. And we'll just whiz the tail shaft off and replace the extension housing bush and seal there. If We've got a special tool where we can pull a bush out. If you don't have that, then you've got to take the cross member off and take the extension housing right off to be able to knock that bush out. On our parts supplier website and you can see the extension housing seals there are two different sizes there or three different sizes so you've got to be aware that uh, there are the right ones and the wrong ones depending on your vehicle. The extension housing bush they're all the same to get the seal off, we're lucky this one has a little flange on it, so you can just tap it out on that. Just carefully tap it around and it will just start to come off. There we go, one seal. And that one, you can't see it, but the rubber has hardened as well. Flattened out and hardened. Now we're just going to pull that extension housing bush out. We've got a special tool where we put it in there and use a slide hammer to slide it out. And we don't have to take the extension housing off. When you're pushing the new bush in, just take a note, there are little grooves there that are supposed to line up with the little hole in the um, extension housing bush and that will allow a little bit of oil to, to lubricate um, on the bush there. Okay, young blokes already put the bush and seal back in. Didn't get to film quick enough. If you want to see how we can replace that bush without removing the extension housing. You can find that in another video. Okay, now on these, they have an external band adjustment. Just there. Good idea to just mark the thread, loosen the lock nut, and then do the adjustment. And the adjustment is 120 inch pound, not foot pound, inch pound, back off one and a half turns. Now it's a little bit squishy in there so I'm not going to film how we do that. You can find that on another video. Bands adjusted. It actually went in about a quarter of a turn. When we backed it off one and a half turns that's where it went. So it's a little, the band has worn a little bit. And we've got the old throttle valve O-ring on the left and the new one on the right. And when you are pushing the throttle shaft O-ring in, it'll keep trying to push itself out. So what you can do is just hold, hold it in here with your finger or a screwdriver. And be careful you don't cut that O-ring because there is a little step on there. Push it all the way in and it just sits there. Make sure when you're replacing the filter, you replace the filter gasket as well. These kits also come with a, a nut and there's a little seal on there if you need the... Yeah. 
if it's leaking or if that rubber's damaged, good idea to replace it as well when you're doing that band adjustment. And if these bolt bolts are pressed up, we just like to push them back down a little bit like that. And I've just had a look, so I'll put the magnet up on the edge like that, and it's out of the way of everything there. You can actually see where the outline of the filter was. And these holes are pressed back down nicely. And there's no need to put any of that goo or, or celastic or anything on those. Now you can see on the vacuum modulator, someone's just put a straight normal hose on there. And it's actually not a vacuum hose either. You're supposed to actually use these. They've got a little elbow in them and they're hard rubber, very hard to collapse under vacuum. The vacuum modulator, you just pop that off like that. You can see someone screwed the adjuster right out on that one, so they want it to shift, upshift a lot sooner and softer. If you want it to shift a little bit higher, the whole shift pattern, and a little bit harder, you actually screw that in. Uh, what can happen if you go too far, the little modulator valve there, you can see it, it'll actually lock up, it won't be able to travel. So once you get to that stage, you know you've maxed it out, you've just got to back it off a little bit until you get a comfortable shift or feel that you're after. Okay, filters back on, modulator rubber, direct ones on there. And you also want to shape that vacuum pipe just so it's pulling into the modulator so it doesn't pop out. So you've got to put a slight little bend in it sometimes and also make sure it's up in the clip up there. You can see that. When these modulators are no good, they leak, you'll suck oil out of the transmission or just go straight through the inlet manifold out your exhaust. This one's not leaking, so we'll leave that one. And also sometimes you'll find that you might get a bit of fuel vapor there. And that's an indication that you might need to tune up your motor. All right, all back together. Replace the O-ring on the Speedo. Bush and seal on the extension housing. The O-ring on your kick down or throttle, throttle linkage. New pan gasket, replace the little elbow vacuum hose on the modulator. Now we can fill it up with oil. And we're putting some Valvoline Type D, which is the old Dextron 2 fluid in it. Putting about 4 litres in just to start, so we can start it up. And whilst filling that up, I'm just going to find some quarter inch vacuum hose to replace that top hose to the modulator. Just a quick double check, make sure there's no leaks there. And making sure we haven't missed anything, retighten something that we've taken off. Good to check and double check your work. Anyway, hope that's helped. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave any comments you might have or questions in the section below. Any more technical questions, just refer to our Facebook page. We can share videos and diagrams on there if needed for a few beers. And don't forget to throw me a few beers if any of this information has helped. Thank you for watching.